important was Chris Paul tonight. Steve obviously played 34 minutes and was plus 12, I think. Um, how important do you think he was? Yeah, he, he was amazing. I mean, just <clears throat> getting us organized and uh, you know down the stretch. This, this is kind of what happens when you're in a rut and you've lost a bunch of games in a row. It's it's just hard. It, it, you you don't get a 20 point blowout. You got to grind grind it out, and that's what happened tonight. But having Chris down the stretch, getting us organized. Um, he got the ball down low to Dario uh, late, um, and he got fouled for the two free throws and called another play where Steph got a layup. Um, you know, that's the uh, the beauty of having Chris out there is he's a, a true point guard, organizer, um, you know, game game closer. So he was great tonight. See, the game like this, is it, given what you guys have been dealing with, is it relief, progress, or a little bit of both? A little bit of both. We weren't perfect, obviously, but, you know, at this stage, you just need to win a game, and that's, um, you know, that was the focus tonight. That's why I played Steph the whole fourth. Um, he was brilliant, I thought, um, all night, and then I thought Wiggs was um, fantastic guarding um, Van Vliet. That's a tough assignment, but um, just got to grind it out, and, and um you know, so hopefully this is a, a good sign and we can uh, get get back on track. What did you think of Clay's night? I thought Clay was uh, much more patient offensively. He took a couple of bad shots early uh, where we had plenty of time on the shot clock. And, you know, everybody just keeps telling him, if you just move it, uh, you're going to get it back with this team. And uh, and that's what happened. I thought he was uh, a lot more patient. He, the, the quality of his uh, shots were uh, was, was much better. How would you compare what he went through kind of the first month or so of the season last year to – to this year, because you know we were kind of having similar conversations around this time. Last it seems like um, you know he's had a lot of slow starts over the years since I've been here. I remember when he broke the record for threes in a game in Chicago. Um, he had been in a huge rut before that, um, so it, it it happens frequently for for Clay. I think he just presses. He wants to make every shot, and and then he gets you know kind of gets in his own way. And um, when he just moves the ball and and um, you know, doesn't put so much pressure on himself um, and focuses on on defense. Um, the shots come to him, and and he's he's much more fluid and free. To expand on that with Clay, could you tell? Can you tell right away? I mean, he made a couple early. Can you sense when he's sort of in a rhythm and and not forcing it? Well, he made a couple early, and then he immediately took two bad shots. So I did not sense it early. So. Uh, I just reminded him. I said, "Look, if you know, if you're not open, just move it. Look, look at these guys we have on the team who who will get you the ball." And um, we had a, a beautiful possession um, early on where the ball swung and hit the paint twice. It was drive kick, drive kick again. I think Clay hit the three to end that possession, and that was. Uh, that's the blueprint, right? And, and but in order for that to happen, you know, Clay has to get off the ball when he's not open, um, rather than you know try to beat his guy one on one and take a, a difficult fadeaway. So that's what we're, we're focusing on. And um, you know, as, if he does that consistently, then the game's going to open up for him. How do you collectively harness that offensive rhythm and make sure that you know this isn't just a one-off and this is what you're going to be able to establish going forward? And we just have to keep watching um, the, the good clips of, of what we're looking for, um, keep practicing, um, or maybe find a day to practice, I should say. We, we, um, we don't have much time to practice, but um, when we do, we will work on things that reinforce that uh, idea and uh, you know the fundamentals that go into that. You close with Saric at center. Um, do you like him with? Obviously, it might change with, with Draymond there. But you like him with the starters essentially. Could could he be? I mean, heavily in that mix to close. Yeah, he could close any night just based on um, you know what he does um, offensively. You know, he just gives us a different look with his three point shot, and it spreads the defense out, gives uh, other guys driving lanes. So Dario's great. Um, he's he's a hell of a player. We're lucky to have him and. Yeah, he could he could close on any night. You mentioned before the game that your bench has outscored the opponents every game, but one day outscore them again tonight. How does that does it complicate the way you're kind of looking at how you can put rotations together? Do you like hey, let's just keep them together or insert them one into the starting? Like how does that factor in when you know your bench players are are playing so well? 
Well, I think um, we're still trying to put the puzzle together. And, um, you know, we've started Chris the last couple of games, um, you know, with Draymond out. Uh, we brought him off the bench quite a bit. Um, but, you know, every every move um, has an, an impact on the next move. And, you know, who, who's uh, – if you start one guy, well, then the bench rotation changes and, you know um, – so that's what we're trying to figure out. I don't think we have any any set pattern that we're comfortable with, um, but we really like all the guys coming off the bench. They're all playing well. It's just we, we've got to find find the right combinations. Eight eight turnovers yeah. for the team. Um, is there is there something when you have low turnover games? Is there something? Is it less dribbling, more moving the ball, like you said, or what sort of leads to only eight turnovers in a game? Um, well. You know, Chris playing 34 minutes and handling the ball quite a bit makes a, a huge difference in that regard. His teams are always low turnover teams. So, uh, you know, we played him a little extra, um, and that um, allowed Steph to work off the ball, you know, with Brooks draped all over him. And um, that, that's that's helpful. And then I think just taking better shots, you know, and not forcing anything, that usually impacts turnovers as well. So you're get into a better rhythm offensively and you have have better possessions. When did you decide to go the full fourth quarter for Steph? Was that pregame, hey, we might, or was it? No. Uh, we took him out with five minutes left in the third, and uh, which was a little early, but he turned it over and he just looked a little tired. And then at the start of the four, they just felt like, I think we were up 11 maybe, um, felt like a crucial part of the game and um, I just wanted to to get him out there to start the quarter to make sure we got off to a good start I was going to try to get him out for a couple of minutes um, in the middle of the quarter but uh, it didn't really that opportunity didn't present itself so we needed to get this one obviously so stayed with him the whole fourth thank you guys